All right, in this video, I'm gonna be attempting to waterproof a Cadex Vista. This is literally my first time doing this, so hopefully it works. <laughs> So last year I published a how to waterproof your drone video and that drone was completely waterproof. I was able to submerge it and it would arm and fly right out of the water. A lot of people asked if it was possible to waterproof a digital setup like this Cadex Vista. So that's what I plan on doing in this video, or at least trying to. I bought this Cadex Vista specifically for this video. I also bought some FPV uh, worry-free that I'm going to try out. In the last video I used Coat King and I figured for this one, I'd use something slightly different that looks like it'll be the same type of coating though. So that's what I'll be using to waterproof the Vista. This is the drone that I'll be making waterproof. I'm probably not gonna cover much of the uh, waterproofing process for the flight controller. I'm gonna mainly focus on the Vista in this video. Some upgrades from the last waterproof drone I did. This one has an external USB port, so I'll be able to completely coat this thing in waterproofing and not worry about getting any in the USB. Plus, this is an all-in-one board, and I won't have to worry about individual ESCs on each arm and fumbling those around. This is a board that I was intending to use for a Cinewhip, but I didn't end up using it, so instead I figured with the external USB, it would be an awesome board to use on a waterproof build. All right, let's do this. So this is a standalone Vista unit. You're gonna obviously need a camera and an antenna, but what you wanna do is solder up a wire to this that'll hook up to a flight controller and just make sure that you get video signal all linked up to your goggles before we take this apart or before you put any waterproofing on it. Once the waterproofing's on there, you might not be able to connect this to a computer anymore because you could get um, some of the waterproofing in here. And if you get it in there, you're gonna have a really hard time getting it out to the point where you can connect this to a computer again. So what I'm gonna do is I have this little cover right here. You can 3D print these. I'm not sure where I got this. I think it came with one of my flight controllers. But when I put the waterproofing on here, I'm gonna keep this on here just to hopefully save the USB port. And I'm just gonna put it right over that. But before we do any of that, plug this into your flight controller and just make sure you get video. Nice. All right, so I just plugged this into the computer, got it all set up, got this bound with my uh, goggles, got my receiver all hooked up with my controller. We got the battery lead on here, everything's Everything's all hooked up and ready to go. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna separate the Vista from this flight controller and I'm gonna only focus on this for the rest of the video. So I'm gonna keep the camera and the antenna all hooked up. I have the little uh, thing in here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna separate these two boards and each, there's a board on the bottom and a board on the top and each board is protected by these little metal heat shields. So I'm gonna take those off. So you have four screws on each side. When you're doing this, be careful because there is a ribbon cable in the very uh, middle. So just take these out right like that. And you have four more on the other side. So now with all those screws out, you can start uh, taking this apart. So you'll kind of feel it wanna separate like that. Now there's a ribbon cable in the middle of this. So what we're gonna wanna do is on this side, you can actually see where it connects. So just kinda have it open a little bit and then pry up on that connector. So once that's disconnected, you can take the boards and just split it apart right like that. So now I'm gonna take this ribbon cable completely off. And I'm gonna remember, I'm not sure if these are different or how they connect. So it's a little P1 right there and that connects to the board that attaches to the camera. So to get this top plate off, it's a little stuck. I'm gonna take a flathead and just kind of wedge it underneath there and that kind of helps force it up. So when you're taking this off, be careful because there's a lot of this blue um, glue stuff. 
and it gets on everything, so just be careful with that. I'm going to clean this up once I get this other side off. I'm actually going to disconnect the camera because it might be easier. So be careful with that. It's uh, It can just get messy. So now I'm just going to clean up the blue shit that's on this with a um, Q-tip like this. And I'm just going to try and scoop up as much as I can and then I'm going to take an old toothbrush and I'm going to really clean this down with some rubbing alcohol and that toothbrush and we should get this looking pretty clean. When you're cleaning on this side, brush this gunk away from the connectors. So you have a connector up here and a connector right here. So I would just brush it kind of in this direction. Obviously, if you did get some in the connector, you can always kind of brush it out with the toothbrush that we're gonna do after I'm done with this, and that should get it out. But to just avoid any, to avoid any mistakes, I would just keep it as far away from those connectors as you can. So that looks good. Now I'm gonna do the same thing for this board. Oh, nice. One side didn't have it on it. So one less side I have, I have to clean up. All right, so I got off as much of the blue shit as I could. Um, this side didn't end up having any on it. So I only have to clean three sides. So I'm gonna focus on this board and then once I get this done, just do the same to this one. So to clean the rest of this blue stuff off, I'm gonna take a toothbrush and a little bit of rubbing alcohol and I'm gonna just put a little bit on the board and just kind of scrub at it lightly. Again, I'm gonna try and keep it away from this, uh, the connectors that are on this. All right, so that looks pretty good. I'm happy with that. Obviously you can go to the point where it's completely clean, uh, but I think that this is good. So now basically just do that with the other side and do it with the other board on this side. All right, so these are all cleaned up. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna re-secure the antenna, the camera, and that other cable that was connecting the two boards. Make sure that you don't have any of that blue stuff sitting in the connectors because then you could put the waterproofing, you could put it all together, put the waterproofing on, and then all of a sudden that, that blue shit's ruining the connection on your camera or something. So just visually inspect it and make sure that there's no blue stuff on there. And then make sure that all of these are pressed on and pressed in completely. Now what I wanna do is I'm going to connect the ribbon cable that connects these two boards together. So if I remember correctly, the this one, it probably doesn't make a difference, but I had P1 on this board, and this is the camera board. So I'm gonna push this on and make sure it's pushed on all the way, like that. That was a pretty audible click. And then attach this side. And same thing goes with these connectors, just make sure that there's no blue stuff in there. That's on, and snaps on. So now what I'm gonna do is, I have some of these, uh, I'll leave a link to these in the description, but these are just helping hands. You can get these for like 16 bucks or something on Amazon. But I'm going to have these actually hold the stack while I put waterproofing on it. And I'm going to, stack it probably at a slight angle and I'm going to bend this ribbon cable just a little bit so that I can access both boards kind of like that 
So position this so that it's holding each board. So that's holding that one. And I want this one to be somewhere in there. And just make sure that it's not pulling on the ribbon cable that connects the two to the point where it disconnects. Because if it disconnects, it's not gonna work. So just double check those connections. And now it's time to start waterproofing. In the little bag of FPV Worry-Free, you get a little brush and you also get some uh, little spudgers here. So I'm gonna probably use a combination of these. So I'm gonna open up the FPV Worry-Free and there's this kind of nozzle. And all I'm gonna do is put this on the board. Kind of like that. And now I'm gonna take one of these spudgers. So I'm gonna use this one and I'm just gonna spread it around on the board so that it gets everywhere. It's gonna cover up those mounting holes, but that'll be fine. We can always just put a screw right through that. So now I'm going to just do the same for this other board that's behind it. And once it dries, we'll be able to go over to the other side and we'll get those. I'm going to put a big old dollop under there. And instead of using the brush, I'm going to actually use this thing. All right, so I'm just gonna let that sit. And then once it's dry, I'm going to probably just reposition the little uh, hands so that I can get this corner and then this corner. And then we'll flip it over and we'll do the exact same thing to the other side. All right, so this has been sitting here for a little over an hour. So it's uh, not completely dry, but it's tacky and it, you know, it'll be okay to flip over and it's not gonna like move all around. Now all I'm gonna do is rotate this over and do the other side. I get it underneath this ribbon cable. So this is what the drone is looking like. I have this completely coated on this side and the other side. And for the, in the meantime, while I let the Cadex Vista dry, I found a plug that fits in there and I just plugged it into uh, seal off the ports so that no waterproofing gets in there and ruins the connection. So once this is dry and the Cadex Vista is dry, I'm gonna plug it in and we'll go test it. All right, so I let this dry overnight and it's still a little sticky, but it's uh, not coming off. I think I'm good to put this on the drone now. I originally was using a uh, Cadex Nano camera with an adapter on it, but then I realized that I had this OG uh, Cadex camera laying around that I just don't use. So I put FPV worry-free, uh, you can kind of see it right in that crack right there, so where the lens screws in. Try not to get any on your lens. And then I put some on the back here when the cable was already plugged into it. So I'm, I can't remember if I mentioned this or not before, but um, if you haven't already, make sure your Cadex Vista is set to 25 milliwatts because if you have it at 700 and it's just sitting here, this thing's gonna get hot very quick. So as soon as you plug in a battery and you see that you have um, image from the camera, make sure that this is at 25 milliwatts. Once you're flying, 
you can have this in like 200, 500, 700, whatever, as long as there's airflow going through it. But when you when you have this on the bench and you're testing it out, make sure this is at two, uh, 25. I'm gonna put a little bit more uh, waterproofing on this board, specifically on this connector that I just plugged in. Just kind of double check everything, make sure it looks good, zip tie a couple wires, and then we'll see how waterproof this Cadex Vista is. All right, make sure we have video in here. Looks good. All right, moment of truth. It's completely submerged. And looks like we got a video. Yep. Let's see if it arms. So it is completely waterproof and working. And we still have video. It works. This is a completely waterproof five inch digital FPV drone. So before I removed the uh, external USB from this flight controller, I did take it out and I tuned it and I flew it around, just made sure that everything was working correctly with it. When you're putting the FPV worry-free on the Vista, make sure you get all the surfaces completely covered. Make sure that everything is plugged in when you're coating it. And most importantly, make sure that everything works and is bound to your goggles before you even put any waterproofing on it. These wires right here are actually the wires that go to the USB. So when I have to connect this to a computer again, if I have to connect it to a computer again, all I gotta do is take the heat shrink off here, solder these wires back to the USB, and I can plug it into my computer. If you want to see the process for waterproofing a flight controller, I'll leave a link to my original waterproofing video down in the description. It's honestly pretty much the same process as coating the Vista, just make sure you have everything hooked up to it, and like I said, just make sure that it flies before you put waterproofing on it. All right, so I want to end this video with a little Q&A since I got a lot of questions on my last waterproofing video. How can the motors still work under the water? Motors actually don't need any waterproofing. Brushless motors like this are just naturally waterproof. Don't ask me how it works, because I honestly have no idea. But you don't have to put any waterproofing on the motors. The only spot I do is technically on the ESC side of it. Um, but as far as the motor itself goes, like just this part, you don't have to put any waterproofing anywhere on it. What about the motors? Don't they get affected over time by the water, especially salt water? My original waterproof drone, I actually took to the beach a couple times, and salt water will definitely damage it if you don't rinse it off. The most damage will be to the motors since the salt water will corrode and eat away at the bearings. I didn't notice any damage though to the electronics and I think that's because they're coated in the waterproofing. If you do find yourself flying near salt water though, I would always have a bottle of water or even better a bottle of distilled water to rinse it off with afterwards. Distilled water is non-conductive and is the best thing you can use to rinse your drone off. Do you need to prep the battery at all? I just coated my electronics yesterday. I don't plan on submerging, but I'd like the ability. Um, as long as the battery isn't damaged at all, it should already be waterproof. I haven't had to add any waterproofing to any of my LiPos. This is the one that I actually plugged into this drone when it was in the tub. A little bit of water in there, but it's not damaging anything. All right, that's gonna do it for this video. If you found it interesting, I mean, if you're still watching this video, you probably found it interesting. And really, how could you not? I just made a completely waterproof FPV drone. <laughs> Make sure you subscribe to the channel, leave the video a like, and if you have any waterproofing tips or have something to say, leave it down in the comments section.